Good afternoon, uh, welcome to my daily chat. Um, today we're going to talk about, well, we're going to talk about what motivates you, what inspires you, what drives you, what causes you to take action in a way that is effective in the world. So the topic today is who or what do you serve? And I'll explain that a bit more in a moment. Uh, before I jump in, let me introduce myself. Well, I'm going to take the time to introduce myself. Let me, that seems so strange to say that. And we're going to dive in. Um, also notice the lighting is definitely different today. Weather changed, it's suddenly cloudy and I've actually got the lights hitting me harder than usual it seems like. So I'm being blinded. <laughs> anyway, that's my stuff, not yours. So hi, my name is Barry Selby. I am an inspirational speaker, a spiritual guide, a love and relationships expert, and also the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women to get you clarity, guidance, and understanding about love and relationships if you're single or a couple or a man or a woman, as I said. And I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I am a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And that's what informs my work and what also inspired these talks starting almost three years ago now called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And today we're episode number 878. So I've got a bunch of these, and I'll tell you about where you can find them at the back end of the broadcast. And today I'm going to talk about what drives you, what inspires you, or what, what you serve, or who do you serve. Because that was a topic that came up this morning. Um, I was doing a Facebook Live in another group, a private group. And that was the topic that came up this morning. I talked about that because being Sunday, hence the casual attire, I was at my usual spot um, at Agape International Spiritual Center, serving the community and serving the... Um, or should I say being of service to the community and the audience, the people who came to Agape, which is what I love doing on Sunday. But it got me thinking about what we do as service, whether it's something we do as a um, way of giving our time, or it's something more potent than that, if it's something that is about making a difference. Because many of us go and serve maybe at Maybe you serve with the homeless, or you serve at an animal shelter, or you serve with your own family. But what drives you? What is it that inspires you in the world? And yes, I'm talking about. Put, sorry, we yanked the cable out of my out of my hand there. What does it inspire you in the world? Whether it's going to be something like it is a purpose a cause, a drive to change things in the world, to change the, change the social condition even. But I want to speak to another point of that, which is, what is it that fuels you every day? You know, I've said in my talks for a long time now, and I'm a passionate champion of the divine feminine. And what drives that, and just give you a quick backstory, because actually somebody asked me that this morning, so I did it then, so I'll do it again now, is, yes, I've had quite a journey of history of relationships. Um, not very pretty one at times. I made my own fair share of mistakes and had some pretty dysfunctional times, which I contributed to, just to be transparent. And after a particularly, particularly bad breakup in 2006, I was in a question, in place of questioning myself about what it was about relationships I couldn't get, what I didn't understand. And I've been on the journey of personal growth. I've been in seminars and training since the mid-80s. So at that point, it had been 20, yeah, over 20 years. But I didn't know what it was that I was missing. And so for the next few months, I was just contemplating, puzzling, questioning, wondering what it was I was doing wrong. Because I, I knew I was doing something wrong according to results I was getting, that I wasn't getting something right. And in that questioning state, I was led through some serendipitous activities. Um, I should say I met somebody out of the blue who led me to some teachings that changed my life. And in cutting this long, a, a slightly longer story, slightly shorter, um, I got to go to some seminars and some teachers and trainings and retreats that really for me grounded in me the understanding of the masculine and feminine polarity, which I've talked about many times before, especially since I started doing these talks, and since these talks are called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart, that's what it's all about. But the thing was, is that during that week, weekend, excuse me, retreat, it was a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the men and women in the room were 
separated every few hours to do different different practices that deepen. I don't know what the women did. I didn't what the men did because I was in that group. We were deepening their masculine. And in fact, it was a process where the women were going into more of their feminine ownership, expression, and um, beingness, as we men were going through our own same thing with our masculine. So every time we come together, would be slightly different, slightly different. On the last practice of the weekend, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, we came together, and this time the men and women stood opposite each other, like in a long line in the room, maybe 25, 30 of each of us. There was a shift I experienced inside of me, a visceral change where I didn't see the women as individuals so much. I saw the women as a collective whole, as a feminine presence, the way to put it, a feminine being. It's the women were absolutely exuding, is a good word, exuding their feminine energy into the room. And it was transformational for me. I got such a hit from it in the sense of being so, I don't say smitten is not the right word, but I was so transformed by the experience. I didn't, I don't think I did it physically. I may have done, but I don't think I did. I felt like I dropped to my knees in worship. And not like a, you know, worshiping the queen. It was a worship of the energy of the feminine that I had experienced for the first time in mass and in purity. And that energetic shift for me was really what changed the course of my life. It sounds dramatic to say it that way, but it was. Because I realized from that point forward, I was always, because I, I mean, let me, say, let me pre preface that. I put out some, I posted a couple of memes yesterday and they be, yesterday and today about how gentlemanly conduct could be part of, how, how gentlemen can be more, <laughs> I'm not saying this the right way, how men can be more gentlemanly with women, put it that way. And it's provoked some interesting conversations. So for a long time, I've, and coming from England, I've talked about this quite a bit, and coming from England, I was raised in that culture where men were gentlemen to women, just the way it was. It wasn't about sexism, it wasn't about romance, it was about just the way we treated women, just period. And it wasn't because we were stronger than women or any of that stuff, at least not in my mind. So that was like the foundation I was living in. Then this experience with this feminine energy in this room, in this seminar, was so visceral for me and so transformational, it became clear that how I live my life was not only just about treating women this way, but how do I teach this? How do I express this? How do I help other people understand this? And particularly, how I could help women that I've known in the past, being in their masculine, because of the way the world treated them, to accept and appreciate their feminine by being held from that space of a masculine heart. My work has been from that point. I'm still, and I'm still figuring out how to do it. And this is, you know, 12 years later. How to really teach women to be in their feminine, but being a man in my masculine. Because there are many women who teach this stuff much more fluidly than I do because they embody it in a way that I can't, or I don't. But I know it's what drives me. It is my serve, it's what draw, drives my service to the world. And so speaking of those two memes that are yesterday and today, I'm very clear that some of the people who responded it and some of the men who responded to it were really, actually some of the women too, missing the point I was attempting to make. So that may be on me. But my point in both of those, those memes was to indicate that how men treat women, which again has nothing to do with relationship or dating or power struggles, the respect we can serve women with as men in this world can be improved. Now, part of that may be to make up for the past mistakes that we as a general race have done. Maybe it's part of the, the, um, the recoil, the post Me Too resonance of how we're changing. I don't know. But I wanted to make the point in this talk to state that we as men collectively can step up our ability to respect women. And this, again, this is not about gender politics or about, well, maybe it's gender politics. It's not about romantic interest. And this is the thing, I guess, some of the people in the, it's all the memes as being about how relationships are, don't match that or do match that. So I may have to go back and make some edited comments on both of those memes now because I watched the responses and 
I didn't mean to do this, maybe, but I certainly got some interesting provocations out of this. But in this talk, what I'm attempting to say, first of all, is where I'm coming from about what I serve, what I'm inspired by. So to stay in, in to answer the direct question, what I said in the title is, who and what do I serve? It's femininity in the world. It's honoring and respecting femininity wherever it shows up in the world from a masculine heart in my work. So that's mine. Let's talk about you. <laughs> Look at me one-sided. What is it that you serve? What is it that drives you? Do you serve? And let me ask you this way, so I want to believe you a couple of questions. Um, this is not going to be a whole how do you do this thing. If you want to find that deeper, you can talk to me, I can give you some guidance. But what I want to offer you as a suggestion, as a nudge, is do you serve to give or do you serve to get? And you'll know which one it is. And my point about this is a succinct way of putting it is what is it that really fuels your gifts in the world? And I was talking about this earlier because I'm aware that there are people who, well, there are many people, many people who go to work and, and work in the world and absolutely feel themselves um, at a loss. They go to work just to get a job to pay the bills. So the question is, what is it you serve there? Do you serve something greater than that or do you serve something by your job? I'm not necessarily saying that what you serve has to be your job or how you serve or who you serve. But I am saying that if you don't have that component in your life, everything else can be drudgery. So your job might suck if it's not fueled by either if it's not fueled by what you serve in it or counterpoint by what you serve in the world outside of that. So my question to you, my my encouragement to you, and my invitation to you is to look at, reflect on, upon what is it you serve, and who do you serve. If you don't know. Start asking yourself the question, see what shows up. And you can look at your life and see where that shows up as a common thread. And if you want help with that, reach out to me. That's it today. That was the talk I wanted to give. It was been on my mind because Sina spoke about it this morning. And I'm also noticing how people often are off track, not sure what they're serving. Maybe it's and maybe it's because they're serving themselves alone, in which case that's a choice. But I feel like the more we can serve something out there in the world to make a difference that's positive, informative, and, and additive then the greater good we can have and the greater we can change the world and transform the world for the better that it can become. I think that's going to be it. My mind's a bit fuzzy. I just I had a nap this afternoon because I had a long day to go up in. I'm still re getting my thoughts. So this was a, was a kind of a dump, <laughs> a download. I hope it helped and abuse to you. Um, I will put some links in the comments. I'll think about what they'll be as in a moment. But before I do that, let me tell you where you can find my replays. This is my Facebook Live, by the way. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, feel free to join me live every day at 5 p.m. You can watch them by either just timing yourself to come and join me, or you can, this one in this broadcast, there's a button you can press for more information, you can click on that to save me, to be notified next time I go live. If you don't choose to watch me every day at 5 p.m., so be it. You can watch the replays, I have them on my um, business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author, where most of them live, not all of them, but most of them live. You can like my page there and watch them there. Alternatively, you can watch them on YouTube because I have a backup, thankfully. Um, I have a YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby, and I have a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine. So please like my page, excuse me, please subscribe to my channel on YouTube, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. You can watch the replays there under Messages from the Masculine. If you have any questions, thoughts on either one, you can post them here or there. If you want to reach out to me on social media, you can. Um, I will put some links in the comments. My book, particularly because I did mention my book. And... And what else do I want to put in the comments? I'm going to put a link in the comments, um, a contact form, basically. Because if you want to reach me out to me about this question in particular, I don't have a form or a thing special with that, but I'll leave a contact form. You can just fill out and say, I want to help in this area, or you want to talk, and you can reach out to me that way. Um, I have a bunch of other stuff that I offer, but if, you're, if you want to help on that, you just message me through the same form, and I'll tell you what I can offer. Um, with that, I hope you enjoyed the broadcast. So it's made sense to you. This is... This is what underlies a lot of my work, by the way. If you haven't seen my broadcast before and you're wondering what it might be about, this is kind of what it's about. So with that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow with something different, interesting. We'll see you at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, I'm noticing now that the clock 
the, the times are changing. It's funny because today's the first day it's been cloudy in, it seems like, months. So it seems like it's darker than usual. So maybe we're getting to, to having um, some nighttime broadcasts coming up, even though it's still 5 p.m. I just feel like it's, a, it's like evening already, which is weird. So anyway, that's a, <laughs> not relevant to the talk, but I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me uh, again. I will see you again tomorrow at the same time, same channel, and we'll see what comes up. Links will be in the comments that I mentioned, and uh, reach out if you need support. And also, I invite your comments, by the way. This is maybe provoking things for you. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. Take care of yourself. Bye.